Hi, I'm Sally Morgan, physical therapist and craniosacral therapist for animals and people, and this is Tristan Corgi, and this is our third installment of Conversations with a Corgi on Facebook Live. Today I wanted to talk about something that I think all of us can relate to, but we never really talk about once we're over the age of 12, maybe, and that is stuffed animals. Um, I have had the pleasure of having wonderful animal communicators in my life, and Stuffed animals have actually proved to be really important in my work as a T-Touch practitioner and in my life as just a dog owner. The first animal I'd like to introduce you to today is Mr. Snowman. He is under Tristan. Here he is. He's a little weather beaten. He was the first really beloved toy of my first corgi, Winston. And Mr. Snowman was a baby toy that was a gifted to uh, Winston from a poodle that we know uh, many years ago in the early 90s. And Winston just developed a love for Mr. Snowman. He's had lots of repair jobs. He doesn't even look like a snowman anymore. And yet, this was Winston's constant companion up until the very end of his life, Mr. Snowman was with him. And it just seemed heartless to throw him away. Um, and none of the other corgis are allowed to play with him and you can see he's had a lot of wear and he just loved that poodle that he met that day and he really wanted Mr. Snowman and thank goodness the owner of the poodle Leslie was nice enough to let Winston take this toy home with him and he kept it with him pretty continuously until the very end of his life prior to that he had a little Mr. Carrot of course he had many many toys and I taught him the names of all of his toys and he could retrieve them for me when I asked him to get them by their name. Um, and just so you know, there is a border collie named Chaser, and there's now a book about her, and she knows thousands of names of toys and objects. Uh, she belongs to a retired psychologist, um, and he has been able to teach her many, many names of her toys. And Winston uh, was my dog that I taught many names to. He had a vocabulary probably over at least a hundred words. So Mr. Snowman was one of his favorite names. And then my next corgi, Comet. Comet never really loved to play with toys. He liked to carry them around and enjoy them and near the end of his life, I had him 16 years, he was getting to the point when, which uh, happens with dogs with DM, where he was whining a little in the afternoon, kind of what they call sundowning in humans, um, and he was very distressed. And I tried three animal communicators and I didn't come up with any answers that made sense to me. Um, they were saying things like he's worried about the doors being opened and the windows being locked, which may be true for a 90-year-old woman, but was not really resonating with me for comment. So I called my friend Maureen Harmony, that's H-A-R-M-O-N-A-Y, she has a website, she's in Eastern Mass, and she's a brilliant animal communicator. And she said that when Comet was lonely, and that was part of the problem. Tristan and I went upstairs to bed every night, and... Comet couldn't come with us because he couldn't go up the stairs and he weighed over 30 pounds and I couldn't carry him. And he needed a lot of care and I needed his equipment and blankets and pee pee pads and everything right near him. So to move that upstairs every night would have been impossible. So after learning this from Maureen, I immediately went out and got Comet a Mr. Lammy. A lot of people's dogs love this. Uh, my friend in Canada, this is her dog's favorite toy. And it was such a popular toy with Comet that I, in fact, had to buy a Lammy for Tristan, and this, in fact, is Tristan's Lammy. Um, Comet, immediately, the next night, he was very calm. He stopped barking. He used to, as does Tristan, use the Lammy as a pillow. A lot of dogs really like to have their neck in a neutral position when they're sleeping, and the Lammy actually is a perfect pillow for a corgi. So this was Comet's toy. Tristan... Oh, he's going to be happy when I find his friend. Tristan, when I first got him, I had this stuffed dog, which was Tristan's most beloved initial playmate. We called it his girlfriend. It really is actually a Sheltie. It looks like a furry corgi. And there was a fluffy corgi in the neighborhood that Tristan also loved to play with. But when he met this toy, he pulled it right out of my pile of stuffed corgis and carried it around the house and he licked its nose a lot as you can see 
and I've sewn her up a few times, mm. and, oh, Tristan, <laughs> and he really loves her, and I keep her on the shelf in the office because uh, she's a little bit fragile these days, and Tristan will go in that room and look for her. And then, more recently, I had the good fortune to find this stuffed corgi puppet online when I was looking for another puppet, and Tristan loves her because look at the similarity, easy boy, between her and his original toy. So this is his new girlfriend, as we call her, easy boy. I keep getting a little too close to the table. And he, if you've seen me at any of the expos I've been to in New Jersey or in Maryland, Tristan loves to lay on my bench in my booth and rest next to this stuffed dog. And of course, people come by and make funny comments about, you know, which one's the live one, and isn't it cute how similar they are to each other? So this is Tristan's new girlfriend. She has a tail, like his real girlfriend, Dory, who's a black and white uh, cardigan corgi about his size, who lives in New Jersey. And they've only met a few times, but he really likes her, too. <clears throat> in my own life, I love stuffed animals when I was a child, and most of us did. And we've all had that experience when they're getting a little mangy and they can't go through the washing machine, and your parents carefully cart them to the dumpster or to the trash can when you're not looking. And that is so painful. I remember my sister and I in the garage, and we found several of our stuffed animals in the trash can and hid them so that we could reclaim them. And I'm sure now my mother would have re you know, expressed regret for throwing them away, but my sister and I saved them, and we had many, many stuffed animals, and lots of us did when we were children. Um, in the old days, you couldn't get such beautiful stuffed animals as we have today, thanks to the Douglas Company. So when I was about 12, I made this stuffed pony and named him after my actual horse, Richard Pony. I've had him all these years, and I made a few for my friends, and my friend Patience, uh, who I've known since I was 12, fell in love with Richard Pony, and oh. often when I see her, just at Christmas, she said, do you still have Richard Pony? He is the most beautiful toy. She thought he was very well proportioned and really well done for a 12-year-old. He has a cute little tail. I made one for my sister. I don't think she has hers anymore, but I've had Richard Pony many, many years, and uh, I loved carrying him around with me to places where I couldn't bring the actual pony. And then, when I was married to Jack, Tristan's dad, um, his dream was to have a stuffed corgi. I remember him saying to me one night when I said, oh my gosh, we have so many things with corgis on them. What more is there that we could possibly want? And he said, a stuffed one. Now this is a person who grew up without a teddy bear and he had bought himself his own teddy bear when he was an adult, a really sweet teddy bear. So the Douglas Company, bless their hearts, came out with a stuffed corgi like this, the big one. And it's the same size as Tristan, really. They look kind of similar. <laughs> and Jack immediately went and bought two of these of his own, and he still has them today. So this was our first stuffed corgi. A lot of corgi owners have this. And, of course, the Douglas Company makes every breed of stuffed dog these days. And then, later in our um, relationship, Jack and I went to the FAO Schwartz toy store in New York City. And I was delighted to find so many stuffed animals, racks and racks of beautiful stuffed animals, stiff ones, every kind of animal. And Jack, knowing at the time that I loved rabbits and we had pet rabbits together, bought me Cozy Snuffy. He's a stiff bunny. He's very soft. He was a limited edition. And lo and behold, we had Cozy Snuffy in the back of our car, and we parked it a few streets off of where we normally park in New York City visiting his parents. And the car was broken into, and the bags in the back seat were taken, along with Cozy Snuffy, number one. Ironically, <laughs> we were in New York, so I was able to immediately go to FAO Schwartz and buy Cozy Snuffy, number two. But this is a very precious animal to me to this day because of that relationship that it represents with Jack, who's been really supportive and wonderful in my life, and because it represents all the bunnies I used to have in my life. I had many, many pet rabbits, which you can read about in my book, Dances of the Heart. Um, now I have some new stuffed animals, including this little corgi here, who was a corgi puppy that I got uh, on the Cape and named him Tristan before the actual Tristan ever came into my life. 
and he's one of my favorites to this day. And then my mother calls these the grumpy corgis, um, and they do look a little sourpuss faced. And Tristan and I have taken the grumpy corgis on many a road trip trying to make them smile more. We've taken them to the beach, we've taken them to New Jersey, they've met the ponies. Grumpy corgis have been to a lot of places, but they still look a little grumpy. Um, and they are uh, from, a, I think, one of the big department stores. They are really called Nat and Jules. The little one is the grumpier of the two. And so these are some of the special animals in my life. Um, another one is Rodney Hamster. Tristan likes Rodney. Rodney Hamster, I found, I love hamsters, and I had a friend with a hamster who brought him to me for several cranial sessions, um, and a large tumor on the hamster was much reduced after a few sessions, and he lived quite a few more years. Little guy, he was a really good hamster. So I got this little hamster during that time, and he used to sit in my truck and drive around, and Rodney Hamster has had the good fortune of being the talking stick in the circles at the closings for several Tellington Tea Touch classes. And this is a wonderful thing to have him imbued with all of the spirit of all of the people uh, reporting the success of their animals and themselves at the Tea Touch classes. So Rodney Hamster's special. He's, he's also uh, been known to dance in the car when we're driving out of the sunroof. He's, uh, he was a little bit more golden colored. He's lost a lot of his fuzz over the years. So you might be wondering why we're even bothering to talk about stuffed animals um, today because, you know, I work with live animals generally. One of the things that we do in Tellington Tea Touch work is work with stuffed animals, and um, Linda and some of the other practitioners have begun to call them spirit animals because they really are uh, full of a spirit that represents not only their breed but also their relationship to you and the relationship to the animals you've worked with with them. And I have a few of these animals with me that have worked with me in many classes. Um, probably the most famous, named after Jack, the guy who um, we got the stuffed corgi and cozy snuffy, is Jack the Jack Russell. I'm sure there are many T-Touch practitioners and others who have Jack the Jack Russell and have him named Jack. Uh, Jack the Jack Russell has worked with me in many uh, T-Touch and craniosacral settings. He has some really good qualities, one of which is that he's the same size as Tristan, so he can wear the variety of harnesses I have that fit Tristan so that I can help people find a harness that fits their dog properly. He also has, um, he stands up really well, so he has gone out into the yard with dogs that I've worked with who have issues with other dogs or fearful of dogs coming behind them or near them. And in fact, I had a really interesting story with Jack. I had a dog coming here who's um, pretty ferocious with other dogs and has made her owner um, fearful of dogs when they're walking, which is now making it hard for this dog, Martha, to be calm around other dogs. Um, a mutual friend has a, a, what we call a neutral dog, a dog who does not react when other dogs are getting excited. So she brought her dog here and they hadn't uh, spent much time together at all. So. Um, eventually Martha was able to be quiet with the neutral dog walking around the yard and just being fine. And then I introduced Jack and I stood him outside the labyrinth where Martha was and you can see he's got a pretty erect posture, his tail's up, he's a little interested and let's say more outgoing than inwardly directed and boy Martha the Labrador, she did not like Jack at all and she just ran over and grabbed him by the neck and tossed him. <laughs> and being a Jack Russell, he was terribly insulted, I'm sure. But it was pretty interesting. And do real dogs think this stuffed dog is an actual dog? I don't think so. I think that, you know, an animal like Comet, who was a very outgoing dog, he could tell a dog was a Great Dane, a Bulldog, a Chihuahua, the many, many, many shapes that we have dogs in. He was easy with all of them and he felt comfortable with all of them. And he seemed to know that these stuffed animals were really stuffed animals, not real dogs. But, you know, he did find comfort in his Lammy. And, you know, Tristan likes these dogs, and they're all around the room in my office when I see dogs, and they all seem to interact with them and, and check them out and sniff their butts. And, you know, they've been smelled by many dogs, so they're much more interesting than they were when they were first new. So Jack, the Jack Russell, has been very helpful. And we have much bigger spirit dogs that we use in T-Touch classes to help dogs learn how to be comfortable with other dogs around them. 
Now Martha, that Labrador, was able not only to be comfortable with Jack by the end of our session, but comfortable with Tristan, who is pretty assertive around other dogs. He's pretty bossy, being short, you know. And uh, he, he's a good dog for Martha to have to react calmly to because, or respond calmly to, because Tristan's a little in your face, even when he's far away. And by the end of the day, thanks to Jack and my friend's neutral dog and Tristan, uh, Martha was able to leave here um, being able to be about six feet from another dog and not be reactive. And her owner was able to do tea touches on herself and able to calmly walk her dog in public places. I also have another spirit dog here who I named Madison after a Blenheim calf that my sister had who passed away. And this is supposed to be a Cavalier. To me, she's much larger and different from an actual Cavalier. But for tea touch work, we sometimes work in a dog's mouth. And Madison has the good quality of having a nice open mouth so that we can show people touches on a dog's mouth in a way that's comfortable and safe for a real dog when you're getting used to doing this. The mouth is very sensitive. It's connected to the emotional centers of the brain. And to be inexperienced and poking your fingers in a dog's mouth can be really invasive. So Madison has taught many people um, about tea touch mouth work and she even has a tongue. So you can see that these animals all seem to have like a slightly different personality and they really are spirits of the animals that they represent and of our feelings towards them. So I encourage everyone to embrace your love of stuffed animals and if you haven't had one in a number of years don't be ashamed to go to the store and get yourself a buddy or one for your dog. I know many of my corgi friends have numerous toys for their dogs and many people's dogs tear them to shreds. Uh, my dogs have never done that. I, I, I don't know what makes a dog tear a toy to shreds other than the excitement of the toy and certainly um, there have been some shredded toys around my sister's house over the years. Uh, her Cavaliers now um, tend to play with each other more than with toys, except for Shayna, who does love to play Frisbee with what they call Timmy, uh, because he was, one day the Frisbee was lost in the sofa, and Judy made the joke that Timmy was lost in the well, and Shayna was able to find Timmy, and so her toys have all been named Timmy. So, as I said before, really take some time to allow yourself to love the stuffed animals in your life as much as you love the real animals. And they really are spirit animals and we are lucky to have them in our lives and lucky to have these companies that make these beautiful ones. There is a company called Cuddle Clones. A little bit expensive, but check them out online. They make stuffed animals that look exactly like your real animal. You can send them pictures of every direction and Judy, my sister, Dr. Judy Morgan, she has one that looks like Myra, her dog that passed away and it is so lifelike. She has done a Facebook Live about Myra, the stuffed one, and her dog Charlie, who did not like Myra, um, has repeatedly tried to eat the stuffed Myra. She's so lifelike. And for anyone who has a senior dog and you don't know how you're going to cope with their loss, this company is a great gift to us. I am planning to have one made, Cuddle Clones, um, of Comet Corgi because he was such a great teacher for me and many, many people in my Cranius Sacral classes. So, uh, this is me, Sally Morgan, PT, CST, and Tristan Corgi, the actual Corgi. Um, saying have a beautiful day today. The weather has dropped 20 degrees here in Massachusetts overnight. The wind is howling out there as it is on much of the East Coast. So get yourself a stuffed animal or a real animal and cuddle up under a blanket and enjoy your day in the afternoon when you get back from work. Thank you very much.